Hey guys, and welcome to the Chemistry Shack. In this video, we will be making 2-chloro-2-methylpropane, also known as tertiary butyl chloride, from tertiary butyl alcohol and hydrochloric acid. Tertiary butyl chloride, also known as tert butyl chloride for short, is an alkyl halide. The word alkyl means that all the carbon atoms are saturated, meaning they are bonded to four atoms. The word halide means that the molecule contains a carbon-halogen bond. In this case, it's a carbon-chlorine bond. The diagram on the screen is called a structural formula, and it's a convenient way to draw organic molecules like this terbutyl chloride. The areas that I've circled are where the carbon atoms are. Because carbon is present in all organic molecules, the carbon atoms aren't shown in these diagrams for sake of simplicity. Some diagrams, known as line angle diagrams, will also omit the hydrogen atoms. The hydrogen atoms are still there, they're just not shown because they're implied to be there. I'll be using the line angle formula for the duration of the video because, frankly, it's a lot easier to draw. I actually didn't have a planned use for this molecule when I made it, and I was more interested in making it because of the reaction itself. I'll explain why the reaction is so interesting later on in the video. By the way, the procedure I'm using for this comes from Organic Synthesis Volume 1, and it's linked in the description. The original procedure is on a 1 molar scale based on tert butyl alcohol, but I decided to do it on a half molar scale. An important note is that the procedure calls for one mole of anhydrous or water-free tert-butyl alcohol. However, it also notes that aqueous tert-butyl alcohol can also be used. The only problem is I wasn't sure of the concentration of my alcohol. I tried to determine the density of my tert-butyl alcohol and use a chart online to see how much water it contained. However, I ran into an issue with that and I'm not going to bother explaining it in the video. However, I do explain it in the video description if you're curious. I ended up just assuming that my alcohol is anhydrous, even though it's probably not. For the scale that I was doing the reaction on, I measured out 37 grams of tert-butyl alcohol and 150 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. All we need to do is add the tert-butyl alcohol to a separatory funnel, followed by the hydrochloric acid. Then, shake well to allow the reagents to thoroughly mix together. Allow the layers to separate for 15 to 20 minutes. After shaking, the mixture separates into an organic upper layer containing our product and an aqueous lower layer. While those layers finish separating, let's look at how this reaction actually works. This type of reaction is called nucleophilic substitution. I'm not going to explain nucleophilic substitution in great detail, but I have provided links in the description to where you can learn more about it. In the first step, the hydrochloric acid protonates the tert butyl alcohol. This forms OH2+, which is a so-called leaving group because it readily detaches from the molecule to form water and a carbocation. The carbocation is easily attacked by the negative chloride ion, forming a carbon-chlorine bond and producing our tert-butyl chloride product. The specific reaction mechanism is called SN1. Again, I'm not going to fully explain SN1 reactions in detail, but what's important here is that SN1 mechanisms only really work for tertiary alcohols. This is because the carbocation of tertiary alcohols is much more stable than those of primary and secondary alcohols. This is why you can make tert-butyl chloride by simply mixing the alcohol with hydrochloric acid at room temperature. You can't do this with primary or secondary alcohols. Alright, so let's get back to the actual experiment. After the layers separate, remove the bottom aqueous layer and retain the top layer, which contains the tert-butyl chloride product. Wash this layer with a 5% sodium bicarbonate solution and shake the funnel to mix the layers. Because we are neutralizing an acid with sodium bicarbonate, a bunch of carbon dioxide gas will be produced. Make sure to vent the funnel frequently to release the gas and prevent the buildup of pressure. After shaking, allow these layers to separate and then discard the lower aqueous layer. Now repeat that washing process, but this time using distilled water. 
And once again, drain off the lower layer and retain the upper layer which contains our product. Repeat these water washes until the product reaches a neutral pH as judged by litmus paper. Now add about 5 grams of calcium chloride to the product. This will remove any excess water before we distill it. I found out the hard way that you really do need to add the calcium chloride. If you don't add it and just distill your product, it will be cloudy due to water contamination. This is undesirable from an aesthetic viewpoint, but also water actually reacts with the terp-butyl chloride to convert it back into the alcohol, so we want to try to dry the product as much as we can to limit this reaction. Anyway, now set up a simple distillation apparatus and distill off the product. The terp-butyl chloride will be the first fraction to come over, boiling at 49 to 52 degrees Celsius. You can clearly see the difference between the crystal clear liquid that was dried before distilling versus the cloudy liquid that wasn't dried. After the distillation, we're left with 23 grams of crystal clear terp-butyl chloride. This corresponds to about a 50% yield. The original preparation claims a 78-88% to 88 yield, so this is a bit low. I think the two main reasons for the lower yield was the fact that I did this experiment on a smaller scale, and that I had to distill the product twice because I didn't add the calcium chloride the first time. Also, this percent yield assumes that my alcohol is 100% pure, so the actual percent yield might be a little higher. Anyway, the product was transferred to a glass bottle for storage. Well, that's it for this video. Make sure to check out some of my other videos, and if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, you may have noticed that this video didn't have any background music. I was just trying out something new, but I want you guys to let me know whether you want me to add the music back in, or leave it as just straight narration. Thanks for watching!